We love you for tuning in. Thank you so much. Meet Domi Sekudu, a very shy but hard-working sound man. Believe it or not, this gentleman here has recorded sound for shows like Afro Cafe, Mzansi Insider, and many, many more. Let's hear more about his vision and story. Thank you for watching Motive. I'm doing this for the first time, so I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> Welcome. How are you, Jimmy? It's been a while. It's been a while, eh? eh? I'm good. Can't complain. Yeah, and you? Happy Africa Day. I'm very well. I'm good. I'm in Durban at the great. moment. Oh, wow. No, that's great. I, I invited you on Motive just to, you know, share your background <laughs> story with results too. I hope, I hope your questions are not difficult, eh? <laughs> No, you you won't you won't even feel like you are doing an interview. It's gonna feel like a chat. I've been behind the scenes, being in front of camera, huh? And this is exactly <laughs> what it is. It's behind no, the scenes. No, it's so chats. difficult. Really? Mm. Well, let's try it. <laughs> and I was even saying, please send me the questions. <laughs> No, man, it's, it's easy yeah. going. It's just a couple of questions, but I'm more interested in just your journey as a sound man because we never we never see you guys, but we know your work. Some of us are fortunate to have worked with you guys and see the amount of pressure, the challenges, and the happy moments that you guys experience behind the scenes, Wabo. And yeah. also the industry, even though it's so challenging and difficult, but I still believe there are people that are looking up to us, the young ones that are looking up to us and, and, and point at us and say, one day I want to be a producer, one day I want to be a sound man. I just want us to speak to those guys and the ones that are in the industry who just need a little bit of encouragement. So, please tell us about your journey. <laughs> Why did you choose to do sound for television? Actually, when I started, I wasn't doing sound for television. I started doing live events, you know, doing sound mixing for big events and all that. And then at some point, I got tired of it. You know, it's a hectic industry. It's really, really hectic. And then I tried knocking doors to do television. And yeah, and then I went to Evan Brew, mm -hmm. gave them my CV, and they never got back to me. I knocked the doors for like two three years nothing was happening then i decided ah, maybe this tv thing is not for me up until i had a friend from church who was working at Evan Drew, so he was working in facility so he was booking people and all that and then yeah, yeah i told him that you know what i'm interested in doing tv and he said okay cool give me your cv i gave him a cv and he booked me and yeah, that's how I got into the industry. It was 2009, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, just before World Cup. Yeah, that's yeah. a while ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah. But funny enough, at school, I was never interested in TV. What did you think you were going to grow up and be? I thought I was going to do live events. That's it. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But then I fell in love with TV ever since I never looked back. Yeah. What yeah. were your uh, first year, second year, third year uh, challenges within the industry since it was a brand new industry for you? Well, you know when people don't know you, it means no one's going to book you, no one's going to take chances like yeah. booking you. So, and I didn't really know people in the industry um, so yeah I worked for Evan Brew for quite some time doing freelance work and then my when I left Evan Brew that's when I went to Bongwe I think Bongwe that's when I got more exposed to other people and I got to know people then Bongwe was based in Red Pepper at the time so it was easier to branch into other production companies from there yeah and looking back now 
and looking at your growth what do you think is your biggest lesson my biggest lesson is patience you know without patience you won't make it especially okay i've always hated um drama yeah because they take forever the setting up of lights and all to set up a scene takes forever so i was so impatient i never had um the love for it but you know as time went by i realized you know what you can't be choosing some jobs you know so i just i had to learn to be patient so you were one of those that used to hate to get a call sheet 80 figure go nine and the shoot starts at about half past 11. Because your job is not, you don't need to, to carry anything and put and shift and position exactly, anything. You just yeah. connect, yeah. Yeah, I'm one of those, eh? <laughs> yeah. I wish I could just get there like 30 minutes before and set up my equipment because I've got my own equipment. So I know my equipment, I don't need to check my equipment, I check it at home. So I just want to get to set, mic up people, or if it's a studio thing, you know, just check if the lines are working properly, the mics and all that, then yeah. Yeah. It is. Which are the great people to work with? You, it can be talent or crew or production houses. Um, you know, crew can make your life and they can break it on set. Yeah. So for me, I prefer, you know, hanging with the crew, it's always fun, crazy people. You know, creatives are very crazy people, so they've got crazy minds and yeah, I'm, I prefer crew. Okay. And in, in terms of production companies, I know you've worked for quite a number of production companies. You know that you find production houses that have good ethics where they either protect or, or develop crew members, right? And yeah. others don't. Mm. For those that mm. don't, in your view, what is it that you don't like about certain production houses? Especially the ones that don't take care of crew. Yo, I'm even scared to mention names. <laughs> don't mention names, it's all right. Just mention the experience. <laughs> Yeah, um, there is, you know, a production company that I once worked with and, you know, they would say call time is nine o'clock, you get there, the production is not ready. Uh -huh. I mean, that's so annoying, the production, like, nothing is ready. The crew waits for like two hours before they can go on a shoot. There's no SNT, so normally what I do, I bring my own water, I bring my own snacks, my yeah. own lunch or breakfast if it's in the morning yeah so yeah you know there's some other production like even for snt it's a mission it's like they just want you to first of all they've negotiated getting the 60 range, rents for 12 lowest, years the lowest that you can ever find in the industry like still using the rates of my 1960 i mean really in this time and age we know After them that, then the experience on set as well is not really nice especially the shows that have presenters some of them you find the presenter is the grumpiest person ever so yeah no i hate those kind of productions especially if you've worked with other productions which are professional when they say call time is nine o'clock you check equipment for like th um, five minutes ten minutes you load into the car you yeah go. so working for others that don't do that is just a nightmare mm. If you were to explain or describe the role of a sound man and its importance to people, how would you describe it? Okay, the rules differ a bit when it comes to studio and ENG. So when it comes to studio, studio normally you get there, uh, check your lines, check if everything is working, the mixer, the mixing desk, I mean, check your microphones, the frequencies, they don't clash. Especially for a live show, live show, I always find it like challenging. Adrenaline, it's, <laughs> it's rush. way up there. Hey, yo, it's hectic. So you know that there's no second chance. It's do or die. Yeah. Once they say live, 
five, four, three, two, one, we live. You go. It's crazy throughout. You only breathe for like three minutes during um, an ad break and back to it again. Yeah. And then when it comes to ENGs, ENGs are more controlled. It's a controlled environment. So if there's anything wrong with the mic, you can always fix it. Make sure that the signal in the camera when if you link to the camera. But normally, actually, nowadays people use DSLRs. So with the DSLR, you record on board. So I I prefer that actually. So yeah, you not link to anyone. You work by yourself. But even though you're in a team, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. And do you enjoy I don't studio? Know if I'm making sense. Yes, you are. Do you enjoy shooting studio? <laughs> I think. Shows. I think I'm getting too old for ENG, eh? <laughs> I'm getting too old for ENG, so I find studio more... I'm more comfortable with the studio. There's a chair, you just sit there. Yeah. Then you run the desk. Yeah, there's nothing much to do. And you've got assistants, micing up people. For you, you just have to make sure your levels are right. Whatever you feed into the PT is yeah. fine. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you to please share two experiences from your life as a sound man. One bad ever experience that you have encountered on set. Two, one best experience that you have encountered either on set or with a production company. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I can't think of any right now. Eh? Let me see. My worst. Yeah. For instance, if you went to, um, you went with a crew to film a president's speech and came back without the sound. You know, my my worst experience. Yeah. Now I remember. I was doing Zanzi Insider. Uh huh. <laughs> and it was a live show, and you know it was. After, you know, during that time when, like, Chigo, everyone wanted to uh, interview Silo Chico Toala. Okay. So it was, yeah, one crucial interview. And then we had a problem with the mic. My goodness, the director was screaming, shouting, and there was nothing that I could do. Eh? We had to request for an ad break from... SABC, so yeah, that was the worst experience oh for me. Oh my! He had started talking already, and the mic yeah, got broken the during. That's the worst. If it was during the live show. Exactly. Yeah, it was during the live show. You know, he had started with the interview, and then the mic started cutting, giving problems, and you know, everyone looks at you. Everyone in the control room, they like, tell me what's wrong, what's happening, and. Oh. Yeah. You didn't uh, get uh, fired, did you? <laughs> yeah, it messed I thought I was going to leave the industry after that. <laughs> and then the best moment. Mm. I can't think of the best moment. I had so many that I enjoyed on set, uh. especially during the live shows. Yeah, when, you know, the show goes well, no glitches and everything just runs smooth. Yeah. Yeah. So how are you coping now during quarantine, lockdown, and not enough, you know, flexibility with your work? Are you back to work? Yeah. Not really. Um, I do get some productions once in a while during quarantine, but that's when I realized that this industry is tough. It is, First it is. of all, I don't understand. Like, the government doesn't really give a damn about our industry. I'm not going to lie about that. And funny enough, our tax bracket is so high. We our were talking about than... this with Lemu the other day, about the tax. Mm. Uh, it takes here to go to your... Yeah, Easy, our man. tax is very high, but when it comes to the government supporting us, it's like they just want the money from us, and then the rest will figure it out ourselves. So, yeah, I was quite disappointed during when this lockdown thing started because we couldn't really work, we couldn't do anything except yeah. for those who are shooting news. So with us, it was just every man for himself. If you don't have savings, then... Yay. Yeah. 
We need lemons. It's crude. I'm sorry. To yeah. Learn. Yo, that so, is terrible. And you know, for some people, you know, when you've got a formal job during mm. quarantine, you know, you stay home, you get a salary, and you have to each and every month. But with us, no, it's no pay because we sell our time. So yeah. we, we don't have anyone to sell our time to. It's tough. Which On, means your family might go without food. Yeah. You might lose your car, you might lose the house, you might lose... Yeah, so many, so many things. I saw something touching on Facebook and okay. a group of people started a fund to raise money and get food vouchers for artists. One guy posted once and literally you could tell, you know when a man strips himself to say, guys, I don't have anything. I'm just asking for anyone who can give me either money to buy bread or give me some food. My heart was so broken. I'm thinking, my goodness, such incredible people in this country that are so talented. And now during quarantine and lockdown, it's as if they don't exist because even the grants that they are trying to give artists, I just, mm. it's not going to be enough for, for the rest of us. Yeah, they can never be enough. So you wonder then why do you even have to pay tax then, if that's the case? The tax that you actually never well helps you when you're in, when, when you're in a situation like this. Need, exactly. Yeah. Mm. It's crazy. It's, it's so sad, eh? And you know, with us as well, our industry is very tricky because... Uh, you start, let's say, SABC commissions a show with 13 episodes. You do those 13 episodes. After yeah. 13 episodes, there's nothing else that you're going to do that you stay home. You hope for another production to call you and start shooting something else. And, you know, you wait, you stay home and hope. Like, you check your phone each and every second. Did I miss any call? Hey, I'm even thinking <laughs> of starting a new career now. <laughs> Pardon? I'm saying I'm even thinking of starting a new career and just do television for fun. <laughs> Same here. Eh? You know, I was speaking to a friend the other time. I said, you know, this year should be the last year he's doing TV. He really needs to move into other things. And I mean, you get old and there's nothing really to show. That's then, another you know, problem that we have. Mm. Yeah. That is so another at the end of problem. The day, you realize that oh, there's nothing. I was talking to my mom yesterday about, we were talking about life covers and so on. And I said to her, you know, I once had a, a life cover. And I feel like I don't even remember when it lapsed because probably for a good three to six months, I didn't have a, a stable income to, to cover myself. Yeah, eh? Mm. Mm. And I'm thinking, yeah. time is catching up, a person is growing old, so are we going to mm. be dependent on just pension from government, who doesn't like us so much? Uh, it's unfortunate, eh? So, you, what, all you have to do is to try whenever, like during the good seasons, you save up as much as possible. Because for me, what helped me, you remember... I was working for Bongwe and mainly most of their productions were from SABC. Yeah, I remember. So when SABC went down, it means all the production companies which are working with SABC are going to be having problems. Yeah. That's when you realize, like, there was nothing else to do. Like, you go for months without any income. That's when I realized that, you know, saving is very important. Fortunately enough, that time, I had savings in where I was saving towards something else of which yeah. it didn't materialize because I had to use that money to survive instead. It's crazy. So what do we say yeah, to crazy. what do we say to people who are looking up to us and think this industry is good enough for them to try it out, for them to pursue? City, what are we saying to the young ones? Because <laughs> that <laughs> You know, when you choose a career, someone once said, when you choose a career, do something that you're going to be excited every day. You're going to look forward to going to work every every day. You're never going to feel like you're working. For you, you're passionate about it. You yeah. do it. <laughs> Passion sometimes doesn't pay bills, eh? 
pension does not pay bills most of the time. So for me, for someone who wants to get into the industry, I'd say to them, "Hey, hey, I don't know." <laughs> It's really going down. It then is, you eh? get other production companies which wants to really, I don't know what's the correct word to use. Uh. Exploit. Yeah, I think exploitation is the correct word. They tell you they don't have a budget and you have to work for the minimal uh, rate. A, rate lower, yeah. a lower rate than your lower rate. Exactly, and on top of that, they don't take care of the crew. You know, there are some production companies, I don't know if I can mention names, like Boomer, for an example, to say, okay, I spend most of my time there. Mm. You know when they say there's a shoot in Devon or Cape Town, you are well taken care of. Yeah. It's like you home away from home, like they'll book you the best hotel, they book you into like your four star five star preferably and the snt as well will be taking care of you and when you come back at, again you still have something yeah. Yeah, nah, left and then there are those production companies when they say you go into Devon, and you start thinking hey yeah and then you get the accommodation is not booked <laughs> oh, <laughs> you have to sleep in a quantum you know <laughs> those yo you have to sleep in a car you get calls on your way there. You are being told, no, we are still trying to sort it out. It's the day of the shoot. You are supposed mm -hmm. to get to location, either rest or start work. They are still talking exactly. about accommodation on your way there. On top of that, even SNT, they say, no, we're going to eat one How much is yeah. SNT now? It's rough out there. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. The last show I was doing for DSTV, SNT was about. 180, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. That was last year. Last yeah. year. Hey, man, you carry this SNT thing. In you look the 20 cents each yeah, year. And then there are other shows, then they'll tell you, like SNT, you don't, you can't even buy a burger. They tell you SNT per meal is 40 rands, 50 rand. I mean, really, what do you do with that? What do you do with you 50 can't rands buy, a meal? You can't buy, there's nothing that you can buy. Unless you're shooting in the township, at least get, you can buy a and then have some <laughs> kolinyana. But if you're shooting in the birds, yeah, there's nothing you can you can afford. Might yeah, as well bring eh? your own lunch. Yeah. Mm. Wow. No man, thank you so much, Dumi. I just wanted to to hear your story. It's good to see you as well. It's been a while. Good. Still you, looking right? good. It's been a while. Been a while indeed. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so Motep is should, just. You know, work together again. I'm hoping we'll bump into each other and do one explosive production together. That'll be I'm awesome. Crossing my fingers. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be awesome. I'm also working on certain right. things while I'm having the time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was. I was talking to someone yesterday, actually. Like, you know, with us, most of the time. Especially during this quarantine, let's help each other. If you've got something that you're doing and you know you've got friends in the industry who are able to help you, yeah. I help you today, tomorrow you help me with something else. Because I've started writing now, I want to produce my own um, drama. Okay. So yeah, this yeah I've been writing during this quarantine. So I was thinking about it that, you know what, you know I've got people in the industry that I can say, guys, um, shooting this, I'll take care of the food, I'll take care yeah. of your petrol, let's do this, and if it pops then rapo you know. I and love I'm that mind idea. Working on to someone else project. I don't mind helping someone else at yeah. all. I love that, that you idea. Know, alone, alone, honestly speaking, you can't do it, eh? You need people. It's hard. It just takes a little while when you're alone. You can do it, I think, but I just think it takes a little longer. And you it don't have all the you. skills as a unit. No, you can't have all the skills. Yeah. Even though there are people who have been, like, who've done so much in the production, but still, you can't do... Production is a big thing. It's a big... You can't do it yeah, it's a big thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you need people. Yeah. It's a teamwork. Yeah. No, that's great, hey. I like that idea of uh, if you have an idea, identify people that you can work with that can support your vision. I do this a lot with some of the people. When I don't have money to pay anyone, I normally trade skills. As you are saying that yeah. you are now writing for a drama series, and if you needed my help, you tell me this is the area I need help with. And when I need help again as well, I would say, you know, exactly. to me, I need yeah. a sound man. I don't, obviously, we're going to sound like all of them. I don't have a budget. <laughs> I'm working on a zero budget. <laughs> we, we never have a budget, eh? Never. <laughs> we hardly have budgets. We are <laughs> adoptive. We've been taught well. I don't have a budget. Come work with me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that's a great thing. With, um, I was with a PM from another production, one of those production companies that I don't like. Yeah. So she's a PM. And I was asking her, what's your rate? It's like, yo, the reason why I haven't called you <laughs> we use students so that you know yeah they, at least they can yeah they agree to that rate but you know professionals don't really take that rate at all and i don't have anything against people hiring students but they must also take full responsibility when a student messes up their production they don't want that they expect students to Give I know. Like an expert. That's what they say when they want us as well with the lower rates. Where they say, no, I'm looking for somebody or oh, we junior mid level. And you come there yeah. as a full house with full experiences exactly. and they want to. Oh, it's so annoying. They must take and children. It's fine. Thing, the sad thing about this industry is I'm going to ask you, Manu, okay, I've got this amount. Uh, could you please do uh, do this production for me at yeah. this rate? And you refuse and say no, that that rate I can't I can't really work for that rate. And then you turn it down. Someone else is gonna take it. Yeah. And someone else is gonna take even lower than that rate. We are very so replaceable. Yeah. Mm, we're very replaceable. Yeah. Oh man, mm. I'm wishing you the best. I hope your creativity for what you are writing gives you good energy every day to keep on writing i've also been writing so i know the process sometimes you wake up with a block of sorts you can't think past your eyes <laughs> you can't at all and mind you i'm new at this eh? i just <laughs> yeah uh, writing not so long ago so but i'm enjoying it so that's far, nice so good. yeah so if i get stuck i'll give you a shout <laughs> good if you need inspiration go to motive on youtube and look at a poem called Dear Artist. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. I hope it Thank lifts you, so you up. We'll do. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much to me. You. We'll be seeing you soon when I'm back in Joburg. Thanks for your time. Most of Thank you. All man. right. Cheers. Pass my love to your family. We'll do. Same to you. All righty. Bye. Bye.